Hi folks, welcome to this video on lung volume. So what we're talking about here is when you're breathing in and out and this air is coming into your lungs and out to your lungs, they're what's called lung volumes, what that air is doing and which way it's going and how much you're breathing in. Now what you've got on this slide are all the different lung volumes you need to be able to define, okay? So there's two common questions that they ask on this topic. What are the lung volumes? And can you label them on a spirometer trace? And what happens to some of them during exercise? So the first thing we're going to do is go quick, go through the definitions of each of these lung volumes. Okay, so what we've had appear there is the definition of tidal volume. Tidal volume is the volume of air breathed in or out in a normal breath. And now it's worth emphasising it's in or out, not in and out. Okay, so please just be aware that it is in or out, not in and out in a normal breath. Okay, the next one, inspiratory reserve volume. Now, Remember, in, if you've watched the Mechanics of Breathing one, and you're familiar with your breathing terminology, inspiration, inspire is breathing in. So that makes sense with this one, because inspiratory reserve volume is the maximum volume of air you can breathe in, okay? Now, what I should add there is in one breath. So I've had to abbreviate it slightly, but, you know, it's just reminding us that's the maximum volume of air you can breathe in in one breath, okay? So if you used to take a big, deep, massive, massive inhale... <gasps> It, all that air is your inspiratory reserve volume. So common sense, expiration, breathing out, expiratory reserve volume is the maximum volume of air you can breathe out in one breath. So you took a big deep breath in and now you're going to really try and empty your lungs, force all that air out. That is your expiratory reserve volume. Okay, so vital capacity. Now this, quite simply, is the three above added together. Your tidal volume, your inspiratory reserve volume, and your expiratory reserve volume. So let's say you took one big massive breath in, really inflated your lungs as maximally as you could, and then forced it all back out again. That's going to include your tidal volume, because obviously you're going to breathe in more in your inspiratory reserve volume than you do in a normal breath. So tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume equals your vital capacity. And we can maybe even just draw that on here as a little equals thing there, because that's essentially what it is, okay? So there's two left. Okay, your residual volume, as it's just appeared there, it's the volume of air left in the lungs after a maximum breath out. Now, you might know about this, you might not. I'm guessing some of you have unfortunately experienced this. Even when you've done your expiratory reserve volume, even when you've breathed out maximally, you've forced all the air out of your lungs, you actually haven't forced all the air out of your lungs. There's around about half a litre to a litre of air that is always in your lungs, and it is there to stop them from collapsing. Now, when I said I bet some of you have unfortunately experienced this, when, when, or if you've ever been winded, when you've been hit in the stomach or you've been hit in the back or something like that, and you get that experience where you can't breathe, you've actually knocked out some of the residual volume out of your lungs. And that's why you struggle to then get air back in the lungs. You make weird noises and you can't move much because you're trying to get air back in. If you ever knock out all of your residual volume, your lungs are going to collapse and then you're in serious trouble. So when you've been winded and you've struggled, you've had a bit of your residual volume knocked out, but not all of it. So finally then, what is your total lung capacity? Well, it's everything above added together, i.e. what is the total volume of air that your lungs could ever hold, okay? Now, those of you keen-eyed might be going, ah, you've, you've done TV, for tidal volume, you've done IRV for inspiratory reserve volume, you've done ERV for expiratory reserve volume, and you've done RV for residual volume. You haven't mentioned vital capacity. Well, don't forget we already have, because what is vital capacity? It's TV, tidal volume, plus IRV, plus ERV. So we've done that in there. So there's no point in putting TV plus IRV plus ERV plus vital capacity. That is vital capacity. So it's all these lung volumes added together equals your total lung capacity. Now we've, what we've got to be able to do is label them on, on a spirometer trace and see what happens to them during exercise. 
Okay, this is a spirometer trace. If you've never seen one before, hopefully you have in textbooks and things like that. Now, what is it showing? This red line is a pattern of breathing. So this person has breathed in, breathed out, breathed in, breathed out. Taking a big deep breath in and then forced everything out of their lungs. Normal breath in and out, in and out. So what we've got to do is to be able to label it. Now, as you can see, this is a normal pattern of breathing. So this is going to be our tidal volume, our TV, tidal volume. Please always put tidal volume, don't put TV. But for purposes of this diagram, we are going to make sure oops, that we just abbreviate just for the point of note taking. And that pen's a bit too thin. So I'm just going to put tidal volume there. Okay, I apologise about that. As we mentioned, or as I mentioned earlier, this is a big deep breath in, okay? So as you might or you should remember from the previous slide, that is our IRV, our inspiratory reserve volume. So you have just done one big massive <gasps> breath in, okay? So that is our IRV. Now down here, we've done a big deep breath out so remembering from the last slide that is going to be whoops just put the pen on sorry take the hand away that is our ERV just be aware that I know I've written it down here but remember you know this arrow represents that wave there I know there's an arrow going through and we'll explain that in a second but the arrow from there to there represents the size of that wave there and that is our ERV so what is this arrow? Well, look, this arrow is including our IRV. There it is there. It's including our tidal volume, that bit there. And it's including our ERV, that bit there. So this one must be our vital capacity. That arrow there is our IRV plus tidal volume plus ERV. So that is our vital capacity, okay? Coming down to the bottom, this is the one that always throws people. That is our residual volume. Now, you might be going, hang on, there's no, there's no wave coming down here. Exactly. Remember, this is the volume of air that never leaves the lungs. So I can't breathe it in or breathe it out. It just stays there. So that area there underneath the bottom our ERV represents our residual volume, that volume of air that never leaves the lungs and prevents it from collapsing, okay? There's only one arrow left. I mean, what you've got here is you've got another few, an arrow here, which is our ERV plus our residual volume. We're not interested in that. That's not in our specification, so don't worry about that. There's only one arrow that we haven't labelled yet. Here it is, this long one down the middle. And what is this one? It's our IRV plus our tidal volume TV, plus our ERV, plus our residual volume, and that is our TLC, total lung capacity. Okay? So that's how you label them. Please don't label them as I have. Please write their full terms. Remember, you will not get away with abbreviations in the exam. Okay? Just a quick couple of things then on what happens to these during exercise. Okay? You might be able to figure out, or you might have already figured out, during exercise, our residual volume never changes. It never changes, not unless we get winded. And we're not going to get a question about being winded or anything like that, because that's not something we want. So our residual volume is never going to change. During a period of exercise, our total lung capacity is never going to change. You sitting there now to go out for a run, you can only maximally breathe in what you can. You can only maximally breathe out what you can. So your, your residual volume is not going to change. So your total lung capacity is not going to change. Equally, your vital capacity, the maximum you can breathe in, added to tidal volume and the maximum you can breathe out, isn't going to change between now and going for a run. It might change and it should change over months of training, but that's not what we're interested in. So what are we interested in? Well, tidal volume, okay? Yes, you've got some wiggly lines here, but what's going to happen to it during exercise is tidal volume is going to do 
that, okay? Now, what is that representing? So let's have a line coming down here. What is happening to tidal volume? What is happening to TV? Two things. It's getting faster and deeper. Your breathing is getting faster and deeper. How can we see that? Well, look. The peaks are a little bit higher than what they were and a little bit lower than what they were. So that's representing deeper breathing. But look at the distance from the top of that wave to the top of that wave and the bottom of that wave to the bottom of that wave. And then look at the distances here. They've got narrower, representing faster breathing. So tidal volume during exercise gets faster and deeper. Now here is the last one and the trickiest one. What happens... Oops, what happens to IRV and ERV during a period of exercise, e.g. running or cycling or swimming? Now, you might be inclined to think they both stay the same. You might be inclined to think they both increase because I'm breathing in more air and I'm breathing out more air. The actual answer is they both decrease. So why is that? Why does IRV and ERV both decrease? Well, they're not, that is still, whoops, it is, eh? Never mind about that blue smudge you put on there. That is still my IRV. It, that wave isn't going to get any higher or anything like that. It's still that size, okay? Equally, that is still my ERV, it's still that size. But remember, what is IRV? It's the amount of air I can breathe in okay, on top of tidal volume. So there is the top of tidal volume here, and that's the amount of air I can breathe in on top of tidal volume, represented by that blue arrow. Well, this is at rest, all around here, yeah? So there's the top of a tidal volume, there's the top of my IRV, so that is the size of my IRV. But when I'm exercising, look, look what's happening to tidal volume. It's got a little bit higher so that is now the top of my tidal volume so when I measure that to the top of my IRV you can now see that this arrow is shorter than this arrow think of it like this IRV inspiratory reserve volume what is your reserve is what you've got left if you need it well the point is now I'm exercising and my tidal volume has increased, I am going into my reserve a little bit, so I have less in reserve. I have less there if I need to use it, because I'm already using a bit of it. Equally, my ERV, what is it? It's that area there. It's that arrow from there to there. So there's the bottom of my normal tidal volume, and that is my ERV, what else I can force out if I need to. Well again, because I'm exercising, my tidal volume has dropped down there, which means I have less in reserve for my ERV, that arrow is shorter than that arrow. So it's a difficult concept to get your head around. Take your time on this one. What happens to tidal volume during exercise? That's the straightforward one. It gets faster and deeper because my breathing gets faster and deeper. And tidal volume is the volume of air breathed in or out per breath. But what happens to IRV and ERV? They both decrease. Why? Because these are volumes and the R is the clue where I have air in reserve. Okay? Because my normal breathing, my tidal volume has increased... I, in both ways, I'm breathing in more and I'm breathing out more. I have less left in reserve. So my IRV and ERV both decrease. Have a read of your white book. Let's help you on that. Okay, and watch this video as often as you need to. But get the definitions down and get used to labelling this spirometer trace. Best of luck, folks.